This is lesson 6.4, Exponential Growth and Decay. You should be on page 314. In this lesson, you will learn how to use and identify exponential growth and decay functions, how to interpret and rewrite exponential growth and decay functions, and how to solve real life problems involving exponential growth and decay. So first we're going to learn about exponential growth. Exponential growth occurs when a quantity increases by the same factor over equal intervals of time. Now before we continue on with exponential growth, I want to talk about this. This has a lot of real life applications. I think we all, we talked about this, all of us enjoy having money. We can buy things, we can do things. Exponential growth has a definite relationship to money and this is one of the reasons when people ask well, why would I ever want to know this stuff. Exponential growth if you understand this can help you take money and make money off of it. So what I'm going to do here is stop for a minute and I just want to give you a, a couple of examples of real life exponential growth. Here's my first exponential growth example. This shows uh, the U.S. stock market the Dow, you might, if you ever watch the news or read the newspaper, you might read about the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Well, if you take a close look at this picture, I'm just going to draw a little line here. This is an example of exponential growth. You can see this is exactly what we had in the last lesson. Okay, B is, is a value greater than 1 and A is positive. And this is real life. Here, this shows stock prices back in 1889, and this shows stock prices here in 2015. And you can see there's an exponential growth pattern to that, a real-life application. This video is a second example of a real-life application of exponential growth. So I'm going to play this now. A woman named Grace who was 100 years old when she died in January, and what she left behind is a secret and a joyful surprise. She was orphaned at age 12, taking in by family and friends during the Depression, and she learned a lifelong lesson in frugality. Her adopted family managed to turn her way to Lake Forest, and afterward she took a job as a secretary at Abbott Laboratory. She never married, lived her whole life in this cottage, never had a car, and used her savings to make a small investment in Abbott stock. Three $60 shares bought in 1935. But she always had fond memories of college, even attended events at Lake Forest. She was one of the most unassuming, friendly, gentle, lovely people you would ever want to meet. And no one at Lake Forest had a clue of the truth about Grace Groner and what she had in mind for them. Oh my God, I couldn't believe it. By the time of her death, those three shares bought at $60 each were now worth $7 million. She gave it all to Lake Forest for a foundation to allow students to study abroad. It's just, just giving hope to a lot of people and, and allowing people to, to dream a little bit bigger than maybe what they thought they could have. And by the way, the little home where she lived is now called Grace's Cottage and takes in scholarship students who may grow up to be secret millionaires, giving it all away just like her. Okay, so the point of that video isn't to guarantee that you can take three shares of stock at $60 a piece and over a lifetime make it $7 million, but it also isn't an impossibility. But what happened in that situation with Grace Groner is she invested and she had compound interest over time. It was exponential growth for sure. Okay. Exponential growth is when a quantity is multiplied by the same factor over equal intervals of time. There's a formula for it here, and this formula models what you learned in the last video. This, this lesson is just taking the last lesson on exponential equations and making sure you understand there's two types. You could have growth or decay. So if you look at this, A stands for the initial amount. Now instead of using B, they're using 1 plus R. B is the same as 1 plus R. 1 plus R means take 1 and add the growth rate, that's a percent, but put it in decimal form. 
T stands for time and the final amount is Y. You can use this to calculate exponential growth. So for example here, the inaugural attendance at an annual music festival is 150,000. Okay? So that's the initial amount. The attendance increases 8% a year, right? An exponential growth function. So we just said the initial amount is 150,000. Okay? So let me arrow that here. The initial amount is 150,000. We're going to put that in for A. The growth rate is 8% a year. Now, 8% as a decimal is 0 0.08, so you notice they're taking 0 0.08 and plugging it in for R. And then T is the time. We don't know how many uh, years that is. So our equation would be Y equals 150,000, and then 1 plus 0 0.08 is just 1.08 raised to the T power. There's the equation. Now. If I want to find out how many people will attend the festival in year five, I can take a five and plug it in for T and put this in my calculator. So let's quickly do that. So 150,000 times 1.08, and this is going to happen for five years, so we'll raise this to the fifth power, and you can see when I do that, I'm getting about 220,399 people. And I just realized I made a mistake because in the f this is the first year attendance and I plug in a fifth power. In the fifth year, that'd be four years later. I should have done fourth power, so let me go back and do that. So let's go back and do fourth power because this would give me the fifth year. So really what I have here is the sixth year of attendance. So let's quickly go back and get the fifth year. So that'd be fourth power, four years after the first. So 204,073. So let's go to that, 204,073. And the book is saying to round this to the nearest thousand. So 204,073 people would round to 204,000. And that's what you can see here they have in the book. It's about 204,000 people in the fifth year. Why don't you quickly try this question? Um, find the equation for the exponential growth function first and then find out how many members there will be in 2016. Okay, I'm back. So first of all, the equation. The initial amount is 500,000. Plug that in for A. Now the growth rate, it's 15% a year. So when you take and put, plug 0.15, remember 15% is 0.15, when you plug that in for R, you'll get 1.15 in parentheses, so there's my equation. So in, if this is the amount in 2010, 2016 would be six years later. So you're going to plug a six in for your exponent and then use your calculator to calculate. They want you rounding to the nearest 10,000, so there should be your answer um, rounded to the nearest 10,000. Now, exponential decay is just the opposite. It's when a, the quantity decreases by the same factor over intervals of time. Okay, a function in the, in, it's, now you notice, this is the exact same formula as the previous page with one little difference. I'm going to highlight it here in purple. You notice there's a minus here, where when you go to the previous formula, it had a plus. So growth, you're going to see a plus in this formula, but decay, you will see a minus. It's, other than that, it's the same formula. It has the final amount, the initial amount for A. You plug in your percent as a decimal for R, and T stands for time. Uh, the 1 minus R, 1 plus R is called the de decay factor. When you have growth, this number inside parentheses is going to be greater than 1. But when you have decay, it would be a number less than one, okay? Here would be a real life situation where we have exponential decay. You can see it here. Radioactivity exponentially decays. If you, I don't know if you are old enough to remember or have heard of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster in, in Russia years ago. Um, 
the plant melted down, radioactivity all over the place. Radioactivity in real life exponentially decays. And you can see that pattern. I'm pointing to it right here. So radioactivity is a real life example of exponential decay. You should be able to look at a table and determine if it's exponential growth or decay. Like if we look at this table in A, you know, 270 times one-third gives me 90, 90 times one-third gives me 30, and 30 times one-third gives me 10. This is definitely exponential decay. The equation for it would be Y equals, now you notice the A value is 270, that's my Y-intercept. And you notice we're multiplying by a third each time. That would be my equation for this particular table. This is definitely a decay pattern. Now let's look at this table. You know, as we add one for x every time, look what's happening here. Times two, times two, and times two. This is definitely exponential growth. Now the equation for this table, a would be 5 because that's my y-intercept and b is 2. We're growing by times 2 each time. So here would be my equation for that, okay? You quickly try numbers 2 and 3. Determine if these tables are growth or decay or neither. Okay, and I'm back. This first table is definitely decay because the y pattern is multiplying by a quarter each time. Now the next table, this is definitely neither. It's not any exponential pattern. This is linear, okay? As we add two each time for x, we're adding seven each time for y. That's an addition pattern. That's a linear pattern. You will be asked to interpret exponential functions. In other words, look at the equation and determine if it's growth or decay. So we will have to do that. So when I look at this, take a look at A. This is definitely growth because look at, this is like having 1 plus 0.07. This table, or this, I misspoke, this equation is representing a 7% increase per interval. This is definitely growth. Okay, now look at this problem. This is definitely decay. It's less than 1. Now remember, so that means... To get 0.98, I must have taken 1 minus 0.2, so this table, or I keep on saying table, this equation is a 2% loss each interval. That would be a decay problem. All right. Calculator. And here is 1.1 raised to the third power. And that would be 1.331. So I have f of t equals 1.1 to the t power over 1.331. Now let me do that real quick. I got to take f of t. And I got to take 1 divided by 1.331. Let's do that. 1 divided by 1. I'm just doing it on my calculator at my desk. And I'm getting about 0.75. So this really rewrites into 0.75 times 1.1 raised to the t power. This is definitely growth. Because look at I have a 1.1 inside the parentheses. That means I must have taken 1 plus 0.1. There must be a 10% growth rate per period here. Why don't you quickly try these four questions? Okay, and we're back, and I'm just going to circle the answers to these. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class. You can use exponential growth functions to solve real-life problems involving compound interest. Now, we've already seen that in the video, compound interest. Now, you can write this down, but it's the exact same formula that we already know, okay? It's this one, the y equals a, parentheses, 1 plus r to the t power. Here's the only thing. Instead of writing the a, they're going to call it p because that's the initial amount. In, in 
financial terms, that's called principal. That's why they use the P instead of A. It's the initial amount. R stands for the annual interest rate. Now, you notice there's a divide by N because if it's not compounded per year, we got we to gotta put how many times we're compounding interest per year. And then T stands for time. You'll see an N in front of that also because, again, if we're compounding interest more than once a year, we got to we got to calculate how many times we're doing that. So, for example, that seems maybe complicated. It's easy. Let's look at this question. You deposit $100 in a savings account. So let's just mark these things. This is my A value which is also called P in the above equation. So I'm going to put 100 in for P. Um, we earn 6% interest. That's R. Now, do you notice it's compounded monthly? How many months are in a year? I hope you're saying, oh, 12. So N is 12. We've got to do 12 compoundings a year. Okay, so I just got to plug these things in. You notice they plugged 100 in for P. They plug 0.06 in for R, and anywhere you had an N, they plugged in a 12. So there's the equation to compound $100 at 5% interest compounded monthly over T years. Okay? So if I wanted to find out after eight years now how much money I'd have, I could plug in an 8 for T which would make this 96th power. I'd have 100 times 1.005 of the 96th power. Okay? Um, we can also use what we've learned to solve real-life problems that requires to write an equation. Write a function that represents the, ba represents the balance after t years. Now, if you look, you notice how this is going up 10%. So I already know right now my rate's 10%. My initial value is $100. And um, it doesn't say that I'm compounding any different than once per year. So this should be easy. So let's go back up to here. The amount would be P is 100. I would have 1 plus 0.1, so 1.1, and I'd have to the T power. And you can see that there. Okay, now, if they earn... Um, graph the, Okay, they ask us to graph these. I'm not going to have you, you could use a calculator for that so I'm, I'm going to skip over that because it would just be plugging this in your calculator and graphing it. Why don't you quickly try this? I don't need you to graph the function but at least write the function out. And I'm back so here is the initial amount 9% interest is 0 0.09 and monthly means 12 times a year, so anywhere I see an N, you notice I put a 12. And then we got to be aware, last part of the video and we're done, you could also have problems that don't have growth with money. We can also have situations where we lose money. Like when you buy a car, this is an example of a car, when you buy cars, they normally depreciate in value. That's called a depreciation rate. So you buy a brand new car and two years later it's worth, you know, 70% of what it was when you bought it. So it's saying in this case the car is worth $21,500 when you buy it. It loses 12% value every year. So let's write an equation. My initial amount is $21,500. We're losing 9% per year once every year, so it's compounded yearly. There's my equation, okay? Oh, 12%, not 9, I got 9% on my mind. 12% per year. So this would work into 21,500 times 0.88t, which is what the book has here. Okay? So now if I want to find the value after 7 years, all you have to do is plug in a 7 for t. Okay? I think I'm going to pause the video here. If you have any questions, please ask in class.